Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about physiologic intracranial calcifications. This is the second video in this video series with title of choroid plexus calcification. The choroid plexus is a structure in the brain responsible for producing cerebrospinal fluid. The choroid plexus can be seen anywhere throughout the ventricular system with the exception of the cerebral aqueduct. It consists of numerous capillary rich viri with a blood follow of nearly 10 times that of the cerebral cortex, which in turn are composed of a type of ependymal cells. The purpose of the choroid is to serve as a sort of filtration for the ventricular system and cerebrospinal fluid. The most apparent location of the choroid plexus is the glomus, located within the trigons or atria of the lateral ventricles. The choroid plexus is typically contiguous throughout the ventricular system, although this may not be apparent on thicker images in a single plane. While the choroid plexus can be present throughout the ventricular system, regions that are normal locations for the choroid plexus but that they may be unusual to see on imaging include within the third and fourth ventricles, the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles, the choroidal fissures, the foramina of Monroe, the foramina of Lushka, the cerebral pointing angles. These MRI images show bilateral choroid plexus ependymomas in both CP angles, or even the foramina of Majendi, which that is the median aperture. Choroid plexus calcification is a very common finding, usually in atrial portion of the lateral ventricles or choroid glomus. This axial CT image shows bilateral choroid plexus calcifications and also pineal gland calcification. You can find full explanation about how the neolar commissure and pineal gland calcification in this video. Calcification in the third or fourth ventricle or in patients less than 9 years of age is uncommon. Choroid plexus calcification may be a predictive indicator of poor evolution or of a neurodegenerative disease. As we can see in these axial CT images, choroid plexus calcifications in a schizophrenic patient. What is the etiology of choroid plexus calcification? We can classify etiology as two groups, physiological calcification and pathological calcification. Physiological calcification occurs naturally with aging, particularly in elderly individuals, and may not cause symptoms or concerns. But pathological calcification can result from various underlying conditions such as infections, metabolic disorders. This axial CT image is related to a patient with Storch Weber disease. We can see geriform cortical calcifications with ipsilateral atrophy and enlarged choroid plexus. And also it may be seen in choroid plexus tumors like this patient with choroid plexus ependymocarcinoma or neurodegenerative diseases like schizophrenic patients as I explained before. For diagnosis we can use skull x-ray. These lateral skull images show bilateral choroid plexus calcifications which we can see in frontal view obviously. Another imaging modality, of course, is CT scan, as I explained before in this image. In conclusion, imaging primarily serves as a diagnostic tool to assess both normal aging changes and potentially abnormal conditions in the brain. While most calcifications are benign, detecting and analyzing them through imaging is crucial for identifying any underlying pathology. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.